What you got there? A smoothie. This is your brain. This is your brain on drugs. So yeah, this is our new S14 project to finish our last S14 project. We found this in a local 240SX group on Facebook. So we grabbed the patrol and went off an, an hour away to Apache Junction. When we bought the patrol, we, we made sure that uh, it was one that already had the tow package because we wanted to be prepared for exactly this kind of situation. And it was the first time we ever like towed anything with it. We went to U-Haul and rented a trailer. So that was my first experience with that. They helped us get, get the trailer attached, which was something I never did before. That was, that was a whole nother problem because our patrols lifted quite a bit. And yeah, that causes some issues when you're trying to hook up a trailer to it. So we had to kind of like muscle it up onto the, the hitch and the whole way we're like trying to make sure we weren't scraping the tail of the trailer on the ground and stuff. But it, it went pretty good. Uh, we went to the guy's house, checked it out. Uh, look, it looked okay. I, ideally, it, it didn't really have the parts, that I, all the parts that I was hoping for, but it's got the main things that I wanted. So I think we're gonna be all right. And especially with how much we got it for, I think that we should be able to still make our money back. Even though there's not a whole lot left here, uh, we should still be able to break even at least. So you guys may or may not recall when we got this thing, it was in a rear end accident. And the main problem with that was the trunk area. So as you can see, the rear bash bar got bashed in pretty good. Um, the trunk is all kinds of crumpled, especially in this area and all along the edge here. Um, I had my friend's body shop try and pull out most of it and they, they did a pretty decent job, but I'm still not, like I'm not happy with this. Like this, this needs to be fixed. I'm not entirely sure if we can. <laughs> get this done, but being that this, this popped up so cheap and it has a decent uh, trunk floor panel and tail panel, I think it's worth a shot. Like I said, we, sh we should be able to get our money back from it because we only picked this up for 400 bucks. So just between the glass, the glass is all good. The front windshield isn't even cracked. It still has the S14 subframe and the gas tank doesn't, the gas tank doesn't look like it's cracked, but I haven't we still need to like disassemble all that and really check everything out and make sure it's good. If, if the tank isn't cracked, that's an easy four or 500 bucks right there. So that, that'll pay for the car alone. The S14 subframe, that's another 350 to 400 bucks. The glass, I'm not really sure how much glass goes for, probably 100, 200 bucks a piece. Clean S13 wheels, gotta be worth at least a couple hundred bucks. The tires look decent. So yeah, we should be okay as far as like not wasting our, our money on this. I mainly want this as a learning experience. So I used to work at a body shop when I was in high school and I would always see them repair cars by like taking the entire panels off, like drilling the spot welds and like prying the panels apart and getting, like unbuilding the car basically from how it was built in the factory. And I've always wanted to try that. And this is a perfect opportunity to, to give it a shot, you know? Uh, the main thing I want to do is replace this tail panel. This crash bar already unbolted. So you can see that's, yeah, so that's junk. But yeah, they did a decent job trying to straighten this out, but it's, it's all wavy and junk, especially the frame rail right here. On the inside, I'm not sure. No, I'm not sure if that part's gonna be fixable, but we should be able to replace the tail panel at least, because this trunk still doesn't really work like it's supposed to because this whole area has been like compromised and it like moves whenever you close the trunk a little too hard so then it won't open or won't close right so that's just a pain in the ass and yeah like i said the trunk floor is an eyesore and if you look at the other trunk yeah you might say it doesn't look a whole lot better but I'm hoping it cleans up better. I, I don't know, it's a little rusty because this car's probably been sitting out in the open for a while. But I mean, it's, it's all straight and that's, that's what's important here. So I'm hoping we can at least get all the panels taken apart. I even want to try and take the quarter panels off and see how hard that is. Uh, that's what I was saying. I, I was hoping this car had good quarter panels so, I, so we can try and replace this mess. But my father-in-law already 
took the liberty of repairing that for us. I didn't really get it on camera or anything, but he just knocked out the dents and threw some Bondo on it and it looks all right. So we might just leave it like that. I would have liked to tr try and get the whole quarter panel off and replace it entirely, but probably don't really have to do that. And yeah, these aren't in much better shape. The left side is decent. It's just got like one good size dent there. And then dent or gash down here at the bottom. The main one that I wanted was the passenger side quarter panel. And that one's significantly worse. So you got pretty good size dent here, huge dent down here. And then over here, somebody decided to chew on it with their teeth or something. <laughs> and down here toward the bottom, another huge dent. So, but for now, let's try and get this tail panel off. And to do that, uh, one of the main things you're gonna need is a spot weld cutting drill bit. So this is really important because this is a lot different than a regular drill bit. This is more akin to like an end mill that you would see like in a machine shop. It doesn't actually drill a hole. It like shaves the material off a surface. It's kind of hard to explain, but like a, a drill bit has the end goal of just making a hole. And it's very efficient at doing that quickly. And in this case, you don't want to do that quickly. I mean, if you didn't really care, you could just drill through the entire spot weld and that would work too. But then you'd be ruining the panel behind it. So that's it's not really the way you're supposed to do it. A uh, spot weld drill bit is better because like I said, it shaves material off of a surface. So instead of just drilling straight through and making a hole, what it does is it'll shave down that first layer from, from the two panels that you're trying to separate and it'll shave it down more precisely. So you have a lot more control and you'll be able to get it just to the point where you're eating through the first layer, but not the second layer. So as you can see here on this area where I was testing it out, you're able to precisely cut through the first layer of metal without affecting the layer underneath. And you can separate both panels without much damage to either of them. Well, we need to finish cutting out all the spot welds, but to do that, we need to get this rear bash bar off. And I guess we can try and see how far off the trunk is on that one if we try and install it over there. Um, and then we can continue all the way around to get all the rest of the spot welds and see if we can get the trunk panel off. All right, to get the bash bar off, we need to take these rubber plugs off the trunk, plant, the trunk floor. And there's two 14 millimeter bolts holding the bash bar on on this side. So the same thing on the other side. All right, now we can just pull this off. Okay, so one bolt lines up. <laughs> That's how crooked this thing is. So, yeah, I'm hoping if we just straighten out that side, this side will more or less get back in shape. But, yeah, it's not looking good. <laughs> All right, now we're ready to continue drilling out these spot welds. And to do that, you need to be able to see the spot welds. And that can be kind of tricky sometimes. Uh, most of them are pretty clear for the most part. Like you can see here, there's little divots every couple of inches or so. That's each individual spot weld. But in some areas, you have some junk slathered all over it. This is called seam sealer. And it can kind of obstruct your view of where the spot welds might be. Down here, I think there's one. But we need to grind all this off so we have a clear idea of where each one is. It's kind of concerning if you think about it. All, all cars are put together this way, just little individual zaps and glue holding the whole car together. So yeah, keep driving like an idiot. It's, it's not gonna go well. Yeah, so to get all this junk off, uh, I'm just gonna use a wire wheel on the grinder. If your grinder has variable speed, it would be nice to turn it down a bit because you don't really need this eating through the sheet metal or anything. 
then we can continue with the drill. Now we're ready to start drilling at the spot welds and Amazon actually sells uh, both of these. Um, this one's a little cheaper because it's basically, you know, your standard cheap Chinese drill bit. This one's like $10, I think. And, and it's still better than some of the other designs that are out there. Like there's some that have like a spring loaded tip and like a little serrated hole saw looking thing. I tried that one too and that one didn't seem to work as well. The spring loaded tip kept like bouncing around and it wouldn't stay on the center punch. So I didn't like that one too much. This one has an actual like solid point. It's a lot more controlled, but like I said, it's, it's a pretty cheap version. And just with the small section that I had done here, it was already starting to kind of have trouble with some of the other ones. So if you have just a real small uh, panel that you want to replace, this will probably be fine. I mean, hell, even if you had to buy two of them, it's still cheaper than this thing. So I opted to get the best possible one that I could find. And this one is from a company called something. I'll, I'll put it down here somewhere when I remember when we're editing this. But this one is made out of boron carbide. I never even heard of that, but it was really expensive. It was like 80 bucks. So this one should be able to get through this whole car and not sweat it. So hopefully it's worth the money, but we'll, we'll see. It's, it's pretty much the same kind of design as the Amazon one, where, but, but this one is uh, three flutes. This one has three flutes instead of two like this one. But other than that, it's, it looks pretty similar, so it should be good. Let's try it out. All right, so the other tool you guys are gonna need is one of these. I think this is for like drywall or something, but you need to make sure it's one that's not too thick, but also not too thin. You need to be able to hit it if you need to sometimes to cut between the little slivers that are left in case the drill bit doesn't get through the entire spot weld. And also you can just put it just to create some tension so that when it does cut through, the, the other panel pops off from the, the panel under it. So that way that's like a clear signal that you're done cutting through the first layer and you don't keep going into the second. So you can see there it's through the first layer. Now just pretty much repeat that like a hundred more times. Yeah. stuff bolted to this. <laughs> it's a surprising amount of trash for being a flat panel. <laughs> cool being able to see like a cross section of the car it's not a view you usually get it does look like the the trunk floor is replaceable though so that's a good sign the only thing I'm concerned about is the frame rails themselves obviously the ones over there are pretty chewed up so I'm hoping that there's a way to remove the frame rail but it's hard to tell if that's like a separate piece from the trunk floor or if it's one piece with the rest of the car, you know, I guess the trunk floor is the next big hurdle. No. All right, this turned out to be a lot more work than I anticipated. <laughs> kind of regretted my decisions here, but 
there's no going back at this point. And I mean, the whole point of this was to get practice at this process. So yeah, um, I got most of this side separated already. And this has been after like, I don't know, three or four hours at this point. I, I've just been fighting with this whole section because like th the tail panel was pretty easy because you can get the little spatula thingy in between the spot welds in most areas. Like you have pretty much room all around to get this in, but in sections like this where I'm trying to separate it from the frame rail, there's nowhere to get anything to separate it when you when you miss the spot weld it's inevitably going to happen because they're so vague in some areas that your center punch just isn't dead center and then you'll miss like a little sliver of it and the panel won't separate so what i ended up having to do on a couple of spots was just drill completely through and then i took this die grinder with a tungsten bit And I would start to like grind away toward the edge that I missed. And that pretty much worked. I mean, it's something we're probably gonna have to repair later, but I mean, there's no other way around it. Like you can't, you can't get the spatula thing in there. You can't get a screwdriver or anything. So yeah, it's just, it's a lot of spot welds. <laughs> Cause you got all this whole row following the frame rail. And then the edge, there turned out to be a couple in the wheel well holding the bottom of this panel in. So I had to take the wheel off and come at, come at it from that side for these three spot wheels down here. So that was kind of a pain. And then toward the back here, there's not a whole lot of room for the drill, but I mean, we're making it work. Now we just got like three dozen more to go. Yeah. <laughs> Fancy. So part of the issue that I was having is that I think where did the other center punch go? Part of the issue I was having is that this center punch, while it's convenient and it's like spring loaded and stuff, the actual tip is very small. I think that's allowing the drill bit to walk around a little too much. And that makes the whole job harder because then you end up missing more of the spot weld that you could have cut out if the center punch was a little bigger and held the drill bit in place a little better. So found these also on Amazon. So I'm gonna give these a shot. These have obviously a much broader end, so it should give us a better, it should help us locate the drill bit better. So I think I'm gonna give this one a shot. All right, last three spot welds. And these are the ones I was telling you guys about on the other side. There's three in the wheel well here because the sheet the the trunk floor is made out of has like a flap that bends down, which is right back here. And it's got these three spot welds here. So we need to drill through those and that should be it for the trunk floor anyway. room for activities <laughs> so right off the bat 
Good news is that these rear sections of the frame rail do look like they're replaceable. There's a few spot welds I can see right here and then a bolt on that side, probably some spot welds on the bottom. So we should be able to replace this whole rear section on both sides. So yeah, it's looking good. Ta-da! That was a success. Uh, everything we needed to off the donor car. The frame rails look great. They're not all crumply. So, now it's just gonna be a matter of cleaning everything up and putting it on this car. Probably should have cleaned it up before I removed it from, <laughs> from this car, but eh. I was too excited to try and like separate everything. So that was actually pretty fun in a pain in the ass sort of way. <laughs> but I think that's gonna do it for this episode. Stay tuned until the next one. See if I gather the courage to chop the good one up. <laughs> See you guys next time. ASMR coconut time. All right, now we're right. And it's inevitably... <laughs>